Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us for another edition of Condo Insider. I'm Raylene Tenno. I'm your host for today. And shortly, we are going to have with us um, Gary Wells, who is with Webmaster Services in Hawaii. He's been a longtime web, um, web artist, <laughs> designer. So in a uh, short few minutes, um, we will bring um, Gary in to do our show. Again, good afternoon, everybody. I want to introduce to you our guest today, which is Gary Wells. He is with Webmaster Services of Hawaii. He has been doing web, um, web services for a long time, going back to 1999. He started his own company in 2015, and he has clients not only in Hawaii, but as far as New York, and I'm sure even farther out than that. Um, so he's well-versed. So the whole purpose of this episode was um, for some of you, if you if you remember, there's some um, some discussion about the new ordinance on benchmarking, and with benchmarking, there has to be a username, password, um, but there has to be some kind of consistency with it. So some of the discussions at the February 16th um, seminar was about the email addresses. It has to be a consistent email. So I know some condos will have like Gmail accounts or Hotmail that they use, um, but we really need to kind of like concentrate on a, um, a steady email that will not change because it will mess up. You have to kind of think it backwards because if the person that establishes that portfolio manager account, they use their email contact and they leave, you're probably gonna have problems with password resets. So that's kind of like the whole focus of this, not only just websites, they kind of go hand in hand because with a website, you have contact information and you can have a professional looking website with an email that belongs to the association. So without further, I am going to turn it over to Gary. And so Gary, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I've worked with you for a couple of years now on some websites, different kinds of websites. So tell us the importance, and you live in a, in a condo kind of a community, right? So tell us the importance of websites. Why do we need it? And why should we have a, a, a specific domain and an email? Hello, Ray. Thank, thank you for inviting me to this. I really appreciate it. And hopefully I can get across some insights as to why I think you should have uh, a professional website and then your own uh, professional email address as well. Um, so there's a couple of things. So we'll start with why should you have your own condo website. So in addition to showcasing your community's amenities, benefits of having a website, will also mainly increase the efficiency when it comes to uh, communication, especially with your condo documents. Um, by posting your house rules, your CCRs, and other forms on your website, residents can easily access and download the information without have, actually having to call somebody. So they can go to your website, they can find the information that they're looking for, and not have to actually call and take somebody's time to get information that's out there. Um, this not only saves time for both you as a condo association, but also for the residents. They don't have to look up a phone number and get a hold of somebody and then get directed to where that information is. It also promotes transparency and ensures that everyone is aware of what the rules and regulations are so everybody is on the same page. Um, furthermore, having a clear and easy to find contact page on your website also increases efficiency in communication by providing a centralized location for residents to submit questions, concerns, or repair requests, uh, the condo association can quickly and efficiently respond to their needs. Um, so there's 10 basic things that most of the condo websites that I've done all have in common. Uh, for example, what are the monthly condo fees might be a main question or what amenities are, are covered in the condo? What are the rules and regulations? Uh, who do I contact in case I do have a question? Are there different departments? Like uh, landscaping is one phone number, or email perhaps, or is it you know building maintenance? Um, what's the parking situation or the fireworks rules or you know things of that nature? Most of the sites that I've done for condos all kind of sort of follow the same idea. Um, a couple more really quickly, or what is the policy on renting out a condo if you're going to be doing subletting? And then, you know, more fun stuff. What events are coming up? Or uh, what's the history and the background of the actual association? Is there anything unique about them? 
So those, those are the main things about having the website that I would recommend. So it also helps like, cause you know, um, buyers now are a little bit more sophisticated. They use a lot of online to shop for certain homes, you know, so they could easily go to your website, kind yeah. of explore what you guys have rather than sometimes it kind of helps because with, um, traveling, you know, they can at least preview some of it before they actually get there. Um, so that they can have, you know, be prepared to ask questions or, you know, if they're specifically looking for certain amenities, you know, at least they can, um, check off whether it's yes or no, that they really want to see it. So it kind of saves a little bit more time. Um, and it just promotes your, if, if you do the website, correct, you, you do it right. It promotes your property, you know, right. um, even realtors, sometimes they go to the website for, to see if they have a website to pull up some of the documents, the, like the condo docs, the CCNRs, some of that kind of stuff so that they can just get it easier. It's a lot easier. And I'm really on the same page with you about putting all those forms and, you know, right. um, I mean, they could even do an FAQ page, frequently asked question page. Sure you could. Know? Um, and, and what's really unique about, especially, you know, I grew up here. So the difference between a condo that's like, say, near the Poly or one that's in, you know, White Pahu, the pictures, the, the condo could be completely different, get a completely different feel for it. So I think it's a, I think it's a good idea. Yeah. So let's talk about email addresses because, you know, a lot of times people move, they hire somebody, they use their own email, they create a Gmail account. Um, but then they, they leave and um, the That's condo is stuck because they had all these years of emails going in and now the guy's gone and didn't leave the password. So now you're stuck. So tell us about having a consistent, professional looking email. So I didn't, you know, I, so I took some notes on what is the most important parts about this. But what you just mentioned is definitely one of them. Having a professional email means that one single person is in control of all the sub emails underneath it. And then what's what's kind of interesting about Google email specifically with their G Suite is that you can actually have aliases. So you could have a, a groundskeeping at Gary.com or a building maintenance at Gary.com. And that could actually be one email address that gets combined into one email box. Um, there's several other, re other reasons for it, and that's a really big one what you just mentioned, but the other one is credibility. It's, I, I work with a couple of hundred clients total now. And the difference when you're email communicating somebody with uh, Gary at 808 at gmail.com versus Gary at webmasterservicesaway.com is drastic. It might be subconscious thinking it's an email address. What does it matter? But it, it, it really does hold true that it's much more professional. Um, it gives instant credibility. It makes the communication, especially if it's not a nice email and maybe you need to do something that's not as friendly, that having the credibility of an actual real email makes it seem more important. Um, that's a big one. Um, using a personalized email address can establish a consistent brand image for the condo owner too, particularly relevant if, you know, if, if it's a smaller condo as opposed to a larger one. Um, another, another huge one about having a professional one is security, uh, security and privacy compared to the free email providers is way different because you're not dealing with billions and billions of emails, even though you're dealing with a lot, it's a much smaller subset and, and they have much tighter security rules and regulations on those. It's, it's much more important. And then the last thing is. If you have a condo association email, something.com, and with all of the you know, spam and phishing, it's way easier to make something up that sounds similar on a free email account than it is on one that's specific for your condo. It's super important, especially with all those phishing emails going out. Great. Okay. So let's talk about so you created what I was saying. The most of what to me, one of one of the really big important parts of it too is the hosting. Like, you know, when I first met you, you, you kind of cleaned up my email that we started with GoDaddy, which was horrible, you know. Yeah. But um, but and and the support, there was very little, I mean, actually no support with GoDaddy. Couldn't fix, couldn't call anybody on the phone to go fix it or even ask questions. So 
you know, having someone locally to deal with it, um, even if, even your emails, because um, because you could be the administrator for the email to make sure and do any corrections or add in, like say they want to bring in another employee, they need an email. Um, they could just reach out to you and say, hey, you need to add in this other guy's email. Um, yep. And with that, you might have some protection with password recoveries, I think, right? That's correct. Yeah. So that's another reason why you want to have a professional have it hosted locally so that you can reach out, not like it's on the mainland and you're talking to someone and you're in a different time zone. You know, we always want to support local as much as we can. Appreciate <laughs> you know, that. It's not really, it's supporting local, but plus two, you have that hands-on, you can get it done in a day versus having to wait hours. Um, you know, if they're on the East Coast, you got to wait hours. You know, I know some people use their managing agents, um, and sometimes that takes them a while to post whatever updates that needs to be done. You know, sure. whereas for, I know what my experience with you, it gets done in a relatively short amount of time, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's been it's been very helpful, um, very immensely helpful to me. And it just makes life a lot easier, especially when um, you need to make some changes or you find uh, mistakes. Um, it's a lot easier to deal with those kind of changes. Um, so um, and I know you have you do a lot of your own hosting here as well. So let's kind of talk a little bit about what we're talking about, maybe the money part of it. Sure. So, so websites are very similar to building a house or buying a car. That depending on how fancy your house you're looking for or how fancy your car you want to buy, that even though it's similar, there could be drastic price differences between the two, right? So um, a good ballpark for website design and development now is about a thousand dollars or so will get you something simple and nice and 2,500 to 3,000 will get you kind of like a Mercedes Benz kind of thing. It'll have a lot more functionality. It might have some better graphics on it. They'll, they'll function very similarly the same though. They're both be mobile responsive. Um, they'll both look very professional. It's just, you know, how much architecture do you need in your website? Right. And then what about the yearly hosting to include the email addresses? Yeah, so um, website hosting by itself is 25 bucks a month. And email hosting varies depending on who you go with. The two huge players are Outlook.com, which is a Microsoft product, and G Suite with Gmail, which is a Google product. Uh, I think it's, I think Outlook, which has Exchange, some larger places might need all the additional Exchange functionality. And I think that's 12 bucks a month for email address. And I believe last time I checked, G Suite is seven dollars a month per email address. G, G Suite's easier to use. <laughs> it's super simple. A, a lot of people, a lot of people use it. I I use G Suite for my own business, and I have six or seven different emails that I use for them. Yeah, because I know my Outlook interferes with my other company, another company that uses Outlook. Yeah. If I have mine up, it interferes. They they clash, so I can only have one open at a time. Whereas G Suites, I can be on different email accounts and not have any problems. And, so, and it's a super simple setup for me too. Yeah. Literally, if you have access to your domain, uh, like GoDaddy or Network Solutions, it's literally a 10 minute setup for me. Yeah. Um, so I really recommend everybody to really consider those, um, those email addresses. And like he said, you could separate it. Like if you have maintenance people, you can do one for maintenance right. and it actually can be forwarded to the resident manager to keep track you know, of all of his people to make sure um, could go to maintenance, but a copy can be sent to the resident manager for follow-up to make sure the assignment or whatever the issue is being taken care of. Um, but um, so in your, um, in your experience with websites, what have you, um, what have you discovered that would be like a do not do? A do not do. Um... Well, the, the main one is if you have a question or you're not sure, it's better to ask someone than try to wing it. I've saved quite a few uh, of my, my customers' websites from being unrecoverable um, by double checking a few things before they make a change. I would definitely make sure that you have daily backups on your website for sure. Absolutely. Whether you're making a change or whether you're hiring somebody to help you, it's super important in case something goes sideways that that you have 
a, a way back machine to, to pull it back to the way it was. That's the number one. And then the, the second one is, you kind of mentioned it before, is using inexpensive hosting like GoDaddy or Bluehost or HostGator. Th their uptime is not very good. And because they have millions and millions and millions and millions of websites running on them, it's very hard to get a hold of anybody for technical support. And they technically, it's funny, they technically won't help you. Yeah, yeah. By the time you do, they really, it was yeah. a waste of time. <laughs> so it's pretty, it's pretty painful. Let's talk about, because a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about um, artwork. So the, like the photographs you put on the website. Yeah. Um, Let's talk a little bit about that, what you can and cannot do, because you had that one incident with your New York client. Sure. So the, the number one sticking point I have on all the website development that I do is content. And finding content or generating content is, is, a, is a huge issue. So I'm not sure if you guys have heard of ChatGPT, but I would look into that for writing content. So if you're looking for like the history of something or you want to reword a paragraph to make it sound more professional or more friendly chat gpt can help you rewrite that thing and it's completely free it's awesome for writing content um for grabbing images pexels.com uh, is a free image place you can go canva for getting graphics designed i believe they have a widget in, or a, like a WYSIWYG kind of thing to help you create them i believe that's on there too it, that'll help you get, get a get a jump start. Uh, the other thing is, don't be afraid to use your iPhone or your, just your camera to take pictures. It doesn't need to be professionally done. It it actually has more credibility and looks more organic if you take the photos yourself. So one of the things to remember also about content: if you're using a picture off the internet, oh, yeah. especially artwork, you need to make sure. Why don't you tell them about that if they're going to be using sure. that that they cut so, and paint. <laughs> you got it. So if you go to Google, you can go to Google image search and search for any subject you want. But there's a button up there called tools. And then under tools, there's a subset where you can check what the usage rights are. If you use an image that has a commercial usage right and you put it on your website, the owner of the image can come back to you and sue you later. So make sure the photography is either designated as free for use or that you took it yourself. Okay. Or um, so what if the artwork, because you have those websites where you can buy artwork online. And yeah. so what if you actually bought that image, can you still, can you use it on a website? A absolutely. There's places you can buy the images from and they give you a yeah. license for it. You, you're licensed to use it. You can definitely do that, but you got to make sure you pay for it. And they can be cheap. Like yeah. 25, 25 yeah. bucks for three images, right? Yeah, so, I, the one I was I was talking to you about, it was like 60 bucks. And I go, yeah, okay, I can do that because it was really cute. And yeah. uh, and I saw some others were like thousands, but they were more elaborate. You know, this one was kind of cute. Um, but yeah, so as long as you purchase it, then you can you can use it, right? right? So you yeah. want to be careful about that so you're not sued later. Um, and that would go not only with websites, it would also go like if you're printing a flyer and you have background, want to make sure that you've... Um, gone through the the right um the rights to use um disclaimers that they have that's made available you got it so, um so really um condos really need to make sure even planned unit developments um i mean even like a pca can um do a big one and then have little branches of the individual condos within their community you know, and that would that would be really nice. That would really because that would say the whole like ever by Gentry and all the other condos within there. That would be really awesome so that they can see what the whole community looks like, you know. Um right. Right, but that right. would be that would be that would be awesome. And each one, each condo which could share in their proportionate share of each of their websites. There you go. Yep. So that would be really cool. So um any other best tips for our um condo boards? Uh, the, the, the final thing I could say is on maintenance agreements. Um, like I said, I, I, I work with a bunch of clients and 80 or 90% of them can't be bothered with remembering how to make a change on a page or to log in and remember how to do it, even though I do give you a training on it. So I do have maintenance agreements that started 150 bucks a month. And all it is, you just send me an email and you say, you need a little bit of help with this or that. And I just go ahead and do it for you and then turn it over within 24 hours. 
Um, if you do want to learn how to do it, I can definitely walk you through it. It's fun. I enjoy it. You did once, but I'm like, okay, I gotta, I gotta write down these instructions. <laughs> right. <laughs> but you just need your basic website for condos, just a basic website. And maybe, um, if you want to really get creative and your, your, your website's getting attention, people are mm -hmm. really going to it. That might be your opportunity to like use it for hosting notices, you know, things of that nature, but you really want to get the traffic going there. Um, so that people know it's there and then it could be, it could turn around to be a great tool to use for everybody. You got uh, it. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So we're nearing the end. Um, so Gary with Gary Wells with West webmaster services, um, his email, um, should be coming up on a, I mean, his website should be coming up on a trailer, webmasterservicesHawaii.com. So um, give him a shout, have a discussion. He can take a look at, if you have an existing one, he can take a look at your existing and make recommendations um, for possible changes. Um, if you're being hosted by somebody else, he can talk with you about what it's going to cost to move it over um, and all of that. And before we also close, we want to remind everybody about um, our Hawaii Council's upcoming um, seminars in July. Um, we have Thursday the 20th, or July the 20th. Um, it's on a Thursday. We have our um, annual legislative update, and we were lucky to get the um, Deputy Director for Department of Planning and Permitting, um, Jiro Sumata. He will be um, the speaker as well, and one of the key points he will be talking about is fire sprinkler permits. Um, he was brought back to DPP at the request of the mayor's office. He had actually retired and asked to come back. And then we have our annual board of director training. It's gonna be split into two separate days versus one full day. So we're gonna have two half days and there will be food so that we're, um, so we're not like um, passing out for lack of food. Um, so it should be fun. It's a little going to be a little bit different format from the years past. So I encourage everybody to go to the Hawaii Council dot org website and register because registration is online only. So Gary, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for doing the show with me. Um, You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Okay. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Aloha. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo. Thank you.